Well, hello, everyone. My name is Julie Smith, and I'm the host of a new show called Elijah Force. Much of Elijah Force will be focused on prayer and intercession, the seer anointing and discerning of spirits, and utilizing our gifts in our everyday lives. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing DeMonte Edmonds from Destiny of the Nations, who is a dear, dear friend of ours. And I know it's just going to be an incredible show with DeMonte. But before we bring DeMonte on, we wanted to run this well video to show you where your generous donations are going. I sure love that video. That was uh, from earlier this year when Steve and Doreen got to go to Uganda and actually dedicate a well and be right there to experience it all with the people. What what an incredible, incredible, uh, you know, project that all of you are giving into. You are truly changing people's lives around the world. So with that, let's bring on DeMonte Edmonds. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You were born for such a time as this. Your prayers are powerful and bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Seers, dreamers, and discerners arise. You are highly gifted and anointed. All warriors arise. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. You are a force to be reckoned with. Hello, DeMonte. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's exciting to be back. And you know, the first show had so much great feedback from people. So it's a blessing to be back with you. Yeah, it's so wonderful to have you back. You were our very first guest. Honor, and uh, honor. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And uh, I wanted to tell you, I, I know we're going to get into heavenly encounters and it's super exciting. I mean, get ready viewers, because this is going to be such an incredible show about heavenly encounters. And we're going to just, it's almost like we're going to encounter the Lord together. I just feel it. I just feel it right now. But a couple of days before our first show with you aired, I had an encounter. Oh, and wow. there was, yes, there was a blue wave that uh, showed up on my ceiling in the morning, a couple of days before our show aired. And it was like a blue it looked like blue electric waves and I've never seen that before, but ever since then, I just felt like this new impartation, this new increase, you know, that the Lord was doing. And I mean, that was powerful to see that with my eyes wide open, wasn't even closed, but just seeing that blue wave that is here. And I think that speaks volumes. I went and, uh, you know, we can get into all that, but that was just a couple of days before your first show. So I'm excited that that happened just before you aired on Elijah Force. Wow. That's exciting. You want me to comment on it now or wait well, for later? 
Well, you can. Sure, why not? Okay. Since it's fresh. Because when you speak of blue waves like electricity, your show's yeah. name is Elijah Force. Mm. So, you know, when I think of the force, I think of like electricity. And so yeah. I think the Lord was anointing you for this new season uh, with a fresh anointing to impart the seer dimension, seer grace, and uh, to stir up those seers that are listening, those prophetic people. So I think it was for you, but it's also something mm -hmm. through you. Because one thing about electricity is a conductivity to it. Yeah. Even if you text, touch somebody that's been rubbing their uh, feet on the carpet, you get that electric shock. So there's a conductivity. Mm -hmm. So I believe you're a conductor of God's mm -hmm. grace in this season in a greater way. And you're going to wow. help open up spiritual eyes and ears of many people that need to be awakened. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate that. And I receive that. And you've spoken prophetic words over, you know, me and our team and Steve and, and the staff. So we so appreciate you and your prophetic voice. And, you know, I, like I've said before, when you come on, it just feels like family and we're just having a great conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's the same yeah. here. So I'm excited. We're going to have a good show today. Yeah. And so speaking of family and, and all that, you have such a beautiful family. We've talked about them, but I wanted to start with a fun fact or a hobby that people may not know about you. And I don't even know what you're going to say. You wanted to save it for the show. Yes. So a fun fact is I actually ate crocodile while sitting with 16 crocodiles. Oh my goodness. I sat in the midst of 16 crocodiles in Africa, mm. eating a crocodile burger. And I have mm -hmm. pictures of it. I didn't have video, but I do have pictures. Because when I tell the story, people don't believe me sometimes. Uh, but the Lord challenged me. I was in the car. And my friend said, hey, I know a place you can go eat with crocodiles. You can actually get a crocodile burger and take it over there. And, and, I, you know, and he was joking. Then all of a sudden, a wave of fear came over me. Like oh. I, felt, I felt paralyzed by fear. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, if you want this fear to leave your soul, go eat with the crocodiles. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God. He he didn't tell me I had to. Yeah. He, he gave me an invitation. And so the first thing I didn't do was tell my wife she was back in the U.S. I wasn't going to get her involved. I said, well, if it goes bad, she'll find out, you know, from a third party. If it goes well, I have a testimony. So fortunately, it went well. And, uh, the, you know, that was I wouldn't do it again, but I did it. And I sat there. You know what came over me? Mm -hmm. A wave of peace. Oh. I forgot about the crocodiles sitting right in the middle of crocodiles. I forgot about them. So that's a fun fact that I've eaten with crocodiles. That's pretty amazing. You have been busy, busy, busy. I follow you online on socials. Give us some updates of what's been going on with uh, life and ministry. You've been busy. Yes, the Lord's just been in increasing uh, ministry. It's been more miracles. We've seen more people getting out of wheelchairs, walkers and canes, throwing those things away. Uh, we've seen more limbs grow out. One of my friends, she has a... a TV program with uh, Sid Roth at Supernatural Network on Middle mm -hmm. East TV. Um, she's been in pain for 53 years. She was injured as a child at 18 months. So she was put in a cask with a dislocated hip and some other injuries for 18 months. So from one and a half to three, she was in a cast. And so for 53 years, she's been in pain nonstop. Oh, wow. And she ministers with this. She reaches tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, especially in the Middle East. And so she was believing when I came to her church that God was going to grow her leg out. That was about three and a half to four inches short because that was a big part of the pain. When God mm -hmm. leg out, she walked back and forth with no pain. Then she said, let me put my heels on. You know, when a woman can wear their heels yeah. and no pain, they're doing good. And so that was one of the many testimonies. We had one service, I think nine different limbs grew out. Um, but just recently, because I'm thinking about this wave. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about wave that you talked about because I smile when you said wave I just saw a wave too a few days mm -hmm. ago I was coming from a meeting and out of nowhere this F-150 shoots out hits me bam hits me hard I jump I mean it makes me jump up in the car and hit my head on the ceiling and I start my dad's on the phone with me I'm Jesus I'm calling on Jesus I'm praying in the I'm praying in some tongues that probably Mike and our changes never heard I mean, I'm yeah. using some deep tongues from the mm -hmm. my spirit, man. And um, then I see the truck. He spins and hits me again. And we're on the interstate. <gasps> oh so God. we're on the interstate going fast. He hits me a second time. Boom. Now, out of all the now I can see he hit me once. But out of all the cars on the interstate, he's going to hit me a second time. So I, 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 my vehicle is knocked into the uh, rail, into the wall. 
And then I see this 18 wheeler. I'm like, oh my God, this is like a movie. Like when 18 wheeler comes, you're dead. You know, like when it comes, boom, not you're dead, but uh, you know, people that have that. And it hits me, but right before it hits me, I told my wife this. I said, the first thought is I'm going, I'm about to go. And then I saw this translucent wave, like at the window. And it and it was a wave of peace, uh, like peace. And I said, I'm not dead. Now I didn't know if I was gonna be injured or hurt, but I knew I wasn't dead. But I felt this peace. And so so he hit me and pushed my car maybe mm -hmm. 20, 30 feet. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get out and walk and move around and I wasn't bleeding. Um bruise on my shoulder, you know, some other mm -hmm. little stuff, but I should have been gone. And uh we have it on video, so it's just the Lord will be supernaturally with you. And one of our spiritual daughters that we just prayed for at our house said that very day, earlier that day, she just felt to pray for against accidents for everyone that was connected to her close. And she also took communion about it for mm. herself and others. And so um, we just bless the Lord. The Lord is good. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And thank God that you're safe and sound and all that. And that reminds me when you said for, or, you know, F-150, um, a few years ago, it was 2021. I was in my tiny little white car um, with my family. My, my niece uh, who was in her, was in her twenties was driving. I was in the passenger seat in the front. My, her sister, my niece, who was 11 or 12 was in the back seat on the left side. And then my brother, and um, uh, we were at a stoplight and it, it was one that almost like turns into a highway. It was one of those where you yep. leave town and it kind of turns into a highway. And so we were at a red light coming off of the exit of the highway and turning left towards town. And it was green light for us. And all of a sudden, um, I hear this voice say, watch out, that car's not stopping. And I look over. And it's a Ford F-150 hauling a camper trailer going through us that ran a red light. And it was like highway speed. My tiny Ooh. little car. Oh, I know. It was crazy. And then we spun around like 180 degrees. My niece, who was driving, blacked out at the wheel. Glass shattered everywhere. And uh, I realized we were still in drive mode. And she blacked out. So, I mean, without even thinking, it was, you know, like that Holy Spirit moment yep. takeover. I grabbed the gear shift and put us into park. And uh, it was, I mean, I could just go on and on and on. But it was just an incredible um, testimony of God's um, incredible protection. And there was a police officer stopped at that red light who saw the whole thing that immediately wow. came to get us. But, I mean... We could have been killed. We could have been smashed. And my daughter, uh, my two nieces are like my daughters. They were on the side of the impact. And we all walked away. And that, um, yeah, that does. Because people sometimes think protection is just God not allowing that to happen. Sometimes he allows it to happen so you can see mm -hmm. how serious the protection is. And what the, also you can see what the enemy wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. You can see what the and, enemy wanted to do. I know we're going to get into encounters and and uh, angelic encounters too, but the Lord showed me later that there were that that voice I heard stop or or watch out that car's not stopping. I thought that was my brother. He says no, I didn't even know that was coming. I was looking the opposite direction. I thought that was my brother's voice, and he said no, it wasn't him. So that was an angel in the spirit. Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps now. And <laughs> the Lord showed me they were like transformer angels, and they were like you know putting their arms up like this, knocking the the Ford F-150 from impact, you know, and yeah. hearing us and all that. And so they totally protect us. They were like transformer angels uh, yeah, I believe dealing it. with the impact of that car. So, I mean, yeah, I know we're going to get into all that, but since you brought that up, I mean, thank <laughs> God for God's protection over, you know, over his people. Amen. Yes. We bless the Lord for it every day. Yeah. I pray every day for, for safety and protection. Mm -hmm. And my youngest daughter, if I don't pray for it in the morning, when we get in the car, she says, father, you forgot to pray. So yes. And <laughs> we take it. We depend on the Lord. Yes. Oh, that's so good. So, Oh, I know we're going to get into heavenly encounters and I love this. I absolutely love this. Um, I'm so excited about this. Um, 
people love heavenly encounters. And I know we, we have some new viewers that, you know, spiritual gifting and encounters are new to them. So please start out by telling us about heavenly encounters. Why do we have heavenly encounters? And, you know, what would you define heavenly encounters as? Take us on that journey. So a heavenly encounter is um, an experience. I want to say mm -hmm. that first, that it's definitely an experience where the Holy Spirit uh, allows you to see into the heavens or experience heaven or visit heaven. Some people even get tours of heaven, but you get a glimpse of heaven. For some it's short, it may just be one scene, uh, but for some it could be an entire tour. It's like, imagine somebody taking you to their house. You know, they may take you to the front door, but you still made it to the house. Or they may take mm -hmm. you to, to just downstairs or mm -hmm. through the entire house. So these heavenly encounters reveal to us uh, the heart of God. Every time you have a heavenly encounter, you get something new that's imparted to you about the heart of God. Secondly, the love of God, just how he's prepared heaven for his people. You know, heaven wasn't prepared for just God himself. It's prepared for mm -hmm. his people. And yeah. you, you, anytime you have a heavenly encounter, it's this sense of all wonder, peace, and love. And then it's a sense of peace, no matter what uh, challenges that you're dealing with on the earth. Yeah. Uh, no matter what you've been through in your life, some people have suffered in their life from childhood to adulthood, whether physically or emotionally or both. Even many believers, they've just been through a lot that you know that there is a heavenly resting place for you, that there mm -hmm. is a reward where you will not be depressed. You won't be anxious. You won't be heartbroken. And you would experience a peace that you've never felt before, a love that you've never felt before. So the love of God is revealed. But then Heavenly encounters often reveal to us the knowledge of God. Of course, we can know God. We can read the Bible. But there are some things that the Lord just wants to make real to us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even some of his own disciples were taken up into the heavens and they walk with him on the earth. They knew him as, you know, Jesus, the son of God that came in fleshly form. They knew him after he was ascended and the Holy Spirit fell upon the church. But they still had heavenly encounters because there was other realms that he wanted to open up to them. Mm -hmm. and other aspects and attributes of himself that he wanted to uh, convey to them. And so mm -hmm. these heavenly encounters just do so much for our, our mind, our spirits, our, our faith, and our yes. walk. And when you have one of these, nobody can, you know, people can argue with you about the letter of the word, but when you've had a heavenly encounter, when you've had a visitation from the Lord, that's yeah. nobody can argue that away from you. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's so good. They're life-changing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've heard of unbelievers even having heavenly encounter. Let's talk about that. Why would, why would the Lord give unbelievers heavenly encounters? They're not even saved yet. And they yes. may not believe. Yeah. So that's a good one. I've had friends that are believers now, but they were mm -hmm. Buddhists. They were uh, Muslims. One of them wanted to be a suicide bomber uh, coming oh. from the Middle East over here. I mean, I wasn't my friend then. They're my friend now that they're a minister. Uh, but you know what's happening? We begin to pray as believers, Lord, bring in the unsaved. Make yourself known to the Muslims. Make yourself known to the Buddhists. Make yourself known to the uh, the Taoists and the Shintos and all those different people. And you know what he does? He may not have someone that can preach the gospel to them, but he can appear to them himself. He can take them up to heaven and he can make himself real. So, uh, for instance, one of my friends, the Lord appeared and said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. And you need to give your life to me and I'm going to deliver no. you and heal you. And this person was a Muslim. And now they're mm -hmm. preaching the gospel all over the world. And look at Saul of Tarsus. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a, a Torah scholar, mm -hmm. but he had no revelation that he was missing it and that he was wrongly persecuting the church of Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you could debate with him because he trained at the best pharisaical school of the day with the best pharisaical scholar, Gamaliel. So he was the man far as Torah, at least he thought. So you mm -hmm. couldn't debate with him letter for letter. I mean, I'm sure he could argue with you all day. But when Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, he yes. says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Persecuting me? I'm the Lord. When Jesus appeared to him, you, know, you didn't need to debate with him. It made the truth real to him. Mm -hmm. So those heavenly encounters for unbelievers is to convince them. There's some people, unless they see the Lord, they're not going to believe because mm -hmm. they've been so indoctrinated uh, in other religions, other doctrines and other things that it takes an encounter from the Lord to bring them over into the kingdom. 
Yeah, so good. And I've heard time and time again uh, about, you know, Jesus showing up to Muslims as a man in, in white and like bright white light. And uh, it's forever changed their lives. And there's so many testimonies of God showing up to unbelievers and even Buddhists and saying, you've been, I remember, I think it was Anne Elmer. Uh, uh, she wrote the book, uh, Transported by the Lion of Judah. Mm -hmm. And she saw um, a, a Buddhist in a temple. I mean, they, they flew all over the earth. You know, she was on the back of the Lion of Judah. And the Buddhist monk was praying but the Lord knew his heart. He was seeking the truth. He asked for the truth. Yes. And lo and behold, miracles happened and he got the truth. So, you know, God knows the heart. God knows the thoughts and intents of the heart, whether, you know, believers or unbelievers, when they're seeking truth, when they want to know, you know, is heaven real and all that. And I, I, I love hearing that God loves showing up to unbelievers that he is real, he's he's tangible, and he wants to change their life. That's so good. I, I, that's probably some of my favorite encounters is hearing ones that come from unbelievers because it makes, you know, others <laughs> that are uh, unbelievers, you know, believe as well. Whoa, that happened, you know? Yeah, because it's and like, mm -hmm. I didn't even believe in this stuff. I didn't believe in God. And one of our meetings, uh, and, and, and I remember that book too with the Alliance. Uh, it was a little mm -hmm. small Yes. Well, very. I remember how small it was, yeah, but how powerful it was. Yeah, pocketbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in one of our meetings, it was a young man. He came to the meeting. He actually came with his family from Virginia to Texas. They drove to Houston, and um, I laid hands on him, and he went out, teenager. But he gets up and he testifies that he saw this door, mm. like in heaven. The door opens, and he sees into heaven, and he says that what he saw reminded him of what he heard about the Garden of Eden. Now, he didn't know a lot of Bible, a lot of scriptures, but of course, you know, some stories in the Bible are like basic stories. So he, he was like, it looked like the Garden of Eden, what he would imagine in his mind. It was like this perfect garden, perfect scenery. And he goes to walk up these stairs to go into the door and doors and the door slam, boom. And the doors close and he can't open the doors and something tells him to look down. So he looks down and he sees a pit of fire. And the Lord's mm. voice comes and says, you must make a decision. Mm. And he got baptized that day. His girlfriend got baptized that day. And uh, they decided to give themselves to the Lord that day. Uh, but, you know, he was probably his life was at risk because of some things that was taking place in the streets. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was giving him a decision. Make a decision today because you either get this, the pleasures of God, or you're going to get the pit of fire. Oh. And... <laughs> You know, in his mind, he didn't think he was probably worthy of the pit of fire, but the Lord showed him that there was options. And he got up and testified, like, I, I couldn't believe, he said, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So when it happens to unbelievers and people that are skeptics and agnostics, they're trying not to believe. Mm -hmm. Many of them are trying, they're, they're hoping to disprove God. But I found yeah. that some of the biggest skeptics, they're just really looking for that one encounter to prove to them that God is real. Yeah. And he'll give it. If you're if you're if you say, God, please let me know if you're real. I need to know if you're really sincere, he'll he'll give you your personal experience. Yeah. And it's become such a great ministry tool for others to share, you know, the testimony of how, you know, the Lord showed up in an encounter to you. And, you know, I, I hope this encourages our viewers too to pray for those in your family and your loved ones that are unbelievers to have encounters. I mean, I'm constant. I have family members that refuse the Lord in every way. And it's like, Lord, give them a Damascus road experience. Give them that encounter, Lord, that they know that they know you, you know, right where they're at you know, to, to, to stop them in their tracks. So making wrong decisions and going down, you know, the, this dark path that they've been on. So I, I constantly pray for, you know, my unbelieving family and friends to, um, you know, have Damascus road encounters, you know, with the Lord as well. So, um, you know, I think a lot of times unbelieving Unbelievers also have encounters as an answer to prayer for those who, who've been praying for their loved ones, you know, as yes. well to really get to know the Lord. Yes. And I, I, you know, I went to minister to some unbelievers and uh, prophetically minister to them. And as I began to speak to them, they'll say, well, you know what? I haven't told anybody, but the other night God came into my bedroom and this happened. And mm -hmm. I was like, God, what? 
<laughs> and I was blown away because here I'm trying to tell them about God, minister to them. And they've had this encounter that they're keeping quiet. They're trying to process it and deal with it. So God is doing some amazing things sometimes, uh, you know, behind the scenes or many unbelievers. Mm -hmm. They've had an encounter when they were four or five, six years old, seven years old, and they haven't told anybody about it. But when somebody brings up the Lord showed me at seven, this happened. It unlocks something for them. So God's been dealing with many people 20, 30, 40 years ago, and he's just waiting for you to reach your hand out. And he's going to take two steps towards you as you make that one step. But that's really exciting. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, you also have, I love this. Um, one of the reasons God gives us heavenly encounters is to anoint people for special ministry assignments. Can you talk about that and maybe give us some examples of encounters about that? Yes, yes. So um, sometimes the Lord, you know, he commissions people for special assignments yes. and some assignments come from the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's, you know, the Holy Spirit imparts gifts, imparts anointing, but sometimes the Lord Jesus or the Father gets involved himself. I'm going to give you an example uh, with Isaiah, Isaiah, mm -hmm. the prophet in the Old Testament. Yes. Uh, he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was mm -hmm. high and lifted up. And he says, the train of his robe filled the temple. And mm -hmm. he goes on and he talks about the seraphim that stood by the, by the throne each one has six wings with two that cover their face, two that cover their feet, and two they flew with. And he yeah. said that one of the serpents screamed, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the whole place was shaken. And then he said one of the angels went to the uh, altar and grabbed some hot coals. And he said, oh, I'm a person on clean lips, unclean heart. The hot coals touch his lips. And, he, and so anyway, the Lord raises him up and says, I want you to go and speak for me, prophesy for me, represent me. But I'm going to sing to a people of a un, of stubborn heart, stubborn ears, stubborn mind, hard headed. Can you imagine being commissioned? I'm going to commission you to the most difficult, hardest people that I can sing you to. So because of their backsliddenness and their obstinate heart and mind and their stiff neckness, the Lord had to give him this encounter and strengthen him for the hard times I had. Because if I remember correctly, Isaiah was sawed in two. He was put in a tree and sawed in two. That's what, you know, history says. Um, so he was a martyr. But there was a heavenly commissioning that took place. Another one was with King Solomon. He was happened in a dream after a great night of worship and sacrifice nationally. The Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, what do you want? He said, I want a discerning heart to govern mm -hmm. the people, to make right decisions. And the Lord said, because you asked that. I'm going to give you wisdom and, 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 and honor and this, that, and other. But the things that he gave Solomon really impacted the nation. Um, Dad Hagen was another one. Lord took him up to heaven and he said, put your hands out. And it was Lord Jesus there and the father was behind him. And he said, he put his hands in his hands. His hands began to burn. He said, today I'm anointing you for a healing anointing, a healing ministry. You've been used in healing, but this is going to be another level of commissioning. Uh, there have been others that I've tried to call this way, but they backed off of it. Don't back off of the ministry that I've given you. Tell the people that I've anointed you for this ministry and that you've seen me, and you're going to see all types of healings take place in people's lives. Uh, so those are some of those uh, commissionings that happen from the heavens. And mm -hmm. usually those type of individuals kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. because they have a, like he had a specific assignment, teach my people faith. Yes. You know, he taught the world faith. He taught the world healing. You know, he really taught the word of faith. You know, now name it, claim it, declare it, it's no big deal. But that was brand new. <laughs> I mean, that was new revelation. So he laid new foundation. There's, you know, other individuals that have had those heavenly encounters, uh, that have helped shift the body of Christ, whether regionally, generationally, or nationally, or globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've heard, you know, people, when you have, like, profound, like, life-changing encounters with the Lord when he is, like, physically in your room, um, it's a calling when you have an encounter like that. He is anointing you for a calling and, and yeah. a destiny in life 
to, you know, be one who, you know, pours out that anointing, pours out, you know, the wisdom and everything needed, you know, to a people group, to a nation, you know, as a ministry leader, um, you know, when you have profound, like life-changing encounters that change your life forever, it, it's for a destiny and a calling that he has for you to, to, you know, impact and change people's lives. So there are different, you know, layers of encounters that people can really have. Definitely. And I, you know, I meditated on the first time that, um, I really saw the Lord. He came into my bedroom twice at 10 years old. Uh, and I meditate about the encounter because some people have had the encounter where, the Lord comes in and they're like, I just felt this peace and serenity. No, I didn't feel that. I felt the total opposite. I felt uh, the fear of the Lord. I felt trepidation. I felt overwhelmed and I felt consumed. And I said, Lord, why didn't I get the tranquility visitation? <laughs> but I believe that a big foundation, and he spoke to me these words. He spoke several things, but the opening was this. I am the almighty God. So my reference for God is that he's almighty, which means that we should be seeing might and miracles in our ministry. Because that's how he visited me. That's the yes. foundation of the visitation. But then the second thing that's the foundation, or maybe it's really the first, I want to say it's the first, is the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because I felt the fear of the Lord. And, you know, I've always wanted to walk in the fear of the Lord. And even in some of our meetings, the fear of the Lord's come in. And I've, you know, I've had friends that are bishops, pastors, seasoned people. And they said, man, I was in your meeting afraid. I don't know why I was afraid. And <laughs> because the fear of the Lord came in. And I think that's one of the things that we need restored to our generation is the spirit mm -hmm. of the fear of the Lord. And, yeah. visit, and those encounters sometimes impart dimensions of the spirit that's outside of just the nine gifts of the spirit. Mm hmm. Wow. Wow. So good. And you just talked about uh, a powerful encounter you've had. Can you share a couple of life-changing encounters you've had yourself in your life? Yes. Now, one of them, uh, sometimes we're in seasons of testing, processing, but we don't know what we're being tested on. Mm -hmm. We don't know what, what the Lord's, how the Lord's scoring us and judging us. Um, and this was actual night encounter. It was like mm -hmm. I was taken up and I was taken into a throne room. I'm not going to say it was the throne room. This was like a, I'm sure heaven has a lot of places, yeah. but it was like a golden room. It was huge. The ceilings had to be, I don't know, hundred feet high. And on each side was maybe a dozen angels, but they were tall angels with these long trumpets. And it was, instead of a red carpet, it was like a gold carpet. And it was mm -hmm. this colorful confetti glitter stuff flying all over. And the Lord Jesus was sitting on the throne, but he was taller than normal. So usually if I see him, he's about six feet tall. But this time he was maybe like 12 feet, 10, 11, 12 feet tall on the throne. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. I mean, I, I, I didn't ask the Lord why he was taller. I remember Oral Roberts said he was praying his praying years ago in his prayer tower. And he saw the Lord, Lord was like 50 feet tall. And the Lord looked and said, you need to build this school. I'm taking you home early. And people judged him mm -hmm. for that. And said he made it up. But I really believe that that was from the Lord because he went into such intense fasting and he's built ORU. But anyway, another story. And so people were being brought towards the almost the foot of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Lord would announce promotion over them. Wow. And the celebration would go up in the place. All the angels, all the saints who were there, whoever was there. And then it got to me and the Lord said, I'm pronouncing promotion over you. Mm -hmm. And then this Bible came out. It just appeared. And he said, um, it was a scripture that came from the book of Samuel. Teach my people about the behavior of royalty. Wow. And now as I'm sharing this, I feel convicted from the Lord because I need to go back and dig into that even more and probably teach or something on that. Lord just brought that back to me. But that was one encounter where I knew that it was a season of promotion that was coming. And But heaven was celebrating. I saw through all of the disappointment, all of the heartache, all of the suffering, all of the waiting, all of the long suffering that heaven celebrated that you passed the test. And it was other people that if I was to see them on earth, I would know them. But it's like heaven wasn't just the Lord celebrating. 
the saints up there were celebrating, the angels were celebrating. They were just festive. Amazing. That was that was one. Another one is actually this book that's behind me. Um, and I've shared this a few times that a dear friend of mine, Dr. Joseph Martin, gave me a prophetic word that um, I was going to have a, my, well, my wife was going to have a baby girl. It was going to be a seven pound baby, three hour labor, no complication, no pain meds. And my wife got pregnant. It was a baby girl. Baby came out 6.9 pounds, three hour labor, no complications, no pain meds. So I called mm-hmm. him. He was in, I, I called him in Norway. And uh, told him the word came to pass. And he said, well, the Lord is going to visit you and nothing you can do about it. So that night, December the 24th, 14th, I go home. I'm tired, been to the hospital and just tired. It's Christmas Eve. You know, we just had a baby, but the baby's my wife's at the hospital. And I get in the bed and I just sit. I sit on the bed, lift my hands to worship. And as soon as I begin to worship, I'm caught up. And I see the Lord for about an over an hour and he's standing maybe 10 feet away from me, but he's at an angle and he's above me. And he begins to talk to me about the coming move of God in the earth. He begins to talk to me about the gifts of the spirit. And he begins to talk to me about my ministries uh, somewhat. And it was like, he's saying, look, I'm going to do more for the body. I'm going to do more for you. I'm going to use you greater. I'm going to use the body. I'm going to use the body greater. Wait for it. Look for it. Pray for it. But it's going to happen. And so, yes, it, it just totally expanded my expectancy of what God could do in mm-hmm. ministry and what yeah. he would do in our generation. And I believe we just scratched the surface of seeing it, but we're seeing it uh, myself and also the body of Christ at large in mm-hmm. our time. Amazing. And, you know, I, I was just thinking of your children as you're talking about that, too, because, you know, Children can have heavenly encounters and powerful encounters. Tell us maybe, I'm sure your kids have had encounters and how would you encourage parents to, you know, help their children, uh, you know, if they're having encounters? I mean, they're so, you know, the childlike faith, it it just happens so freely and and without even, you know, you know, asking for it. It just happens because of that childlike faith and wonder that, you know, later on in life, we, you know, put away as, you know, it's not even important anymore, but, you know, childlike faith, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven unless you come as a child. So talk a little bit about that. So my oldest daughter, several years ago, she was crying one night and I said, well, what's, we said, what's wrong? She said, well, at night God keeps coming in my room and he keeps taking me up to this place, this place full of light. And, uh, uh, I don't, I don't see God because he's, he's surrounded by this white stuff. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like light, but it's like this white stuff, the glory of God. She don't know the words. And and I can't really see his face. And he's ta- telling me stuff and talking to me. And I'm just telling him, can I go back to my mom and dad? Can I go back down to my mom and dad? And so she knew that it was up. She knew that he was like light. And she knew that it was this white stuff surrounding him that wasn't light, but it was something different. And she's just like, hey, can I get back to my parents? And I'm thinking, I wanted to shake her like. Look, we're over here praying and fasting and seeking the Lord for him to give us some instruction or just a little word. And you're up in the heavens and you ask to come back. Stay in the heavens so he lets you back. But, but, but we just, we laughed and we rejoiced because it was the Lord dealing with her. And we just encouraged her, if it's God, it's okay. Uh, this happened a week ago. Not that mm-hmm. instance, that was years ago. This happened a week ago. Uh, my wife woke up and... Uh, she ran downstairs to pray and the Lord gave me a word. He said, I'm releasing new angels into the earth for this season. Mm. And so later on that night we went to pray and I told her the word the Lord gave me. Well, first she tells me the reason she jumped out of the bed, she discerned the angel by the bed and the angel told her, get up and pray. But she said, this was a different angel. It wasn't like, you know, the one I'm used to. This was like a youthful, like a youthful energy and voice. Mm. And I said, well, the Lord told me he's releasing new angels in earth. And I tell her about this encounter I had some years back. Um, so anyway, she said, I feel like you need to read the scripture. So I read a scripture from Psalms out loud. Like I really don't read the scriptures out loud. I read it out loud as a proclamation. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to pray. We're sitting down on the couch, lights off. It's about 10 o'clock and the kids upstairs in the bed. We heard scream, mommy, daddy. Mommy. So I run upstairs. I said, what's wrong? My daughter says, there's a glowing man standing by the door. He just was standing by the door looking at me. But when you came in, he disappeared. 
And I said, it was a glowing man. I said, what's he doing? He's just staring at me, just like watching over me. And, and I'm scared. I said, listen, I'm going to go back downstairs. Me and mommy up. Nothing's going to happen. We're going to pray. It's just an angel. So it's okay. And when I said that, she started crying. And I said, because mm-hmm. <laughs> here I'm telling her, hey, I'm going to leave you in the room with the angel. You'll be okay. And then I thought about it. I said, no, it's okay. He was just watching you, protecting you. It was a good thing. Yes. Um, I had to calm her down. But <laughs> that happened a week ago. But we encourage them that God is real. God is with you. And we don't want to make them to feel like it's so spooky or abnormal mm-hmm. for them exactly. to have those encounters. And you definitely, parents, please don't dismiss it and say, oh, that's nothing. It's nothing to it. Just your mind, and active imagination. Please don't diminish their experience because it's going to make them less open to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the supernatural realm is very real and the youth love the supernatural realm. Unfortunately, you know, it's on the wrong side. I mean, look at all the Harry Potter stuff that children are just fascinated with, you know, and it's like, you know, they need to know the supernatural ways of the Lord and there's so much more and it's light and, um, you know, and you can flow in those gifts with the Lord. And so, yeah, they're just, there's a fascination with kids in these days with supernatural encounters. So we, you, Parents can really train up their kids in the way that they should go concerning, uh, you know, encounters with the Lord and having them. And, um, you know, I would just encourage parents to, you know, talk to their kids about them and pray into them as well. And your daughter, I, I just, as she was share, you were sharing that. I said, your daughter is a seer. She has a seer anointing on her life. She's going to see a lot more and she probably has already seen much more. And, um, you know, I, I yeah. see her just growing in her Sarah gifting um, and going into heavenly realms more. And she's going to get warnings from the Lord over people's lives, like to pray for them, to keep them out of harm's way. You know, like she may see a friend, like walk into a dangerous situation, even, you know, at school or, you know, whatever. And she's going to be able to give warnings to their friend. She's going to see these things and speak into people's lives. So it's so important. And, you, you know, I just, you know, congratulate you and your wife. You, you guys do such an incredible job with your children and it shows and they're Thank growing. We, we try. And, um, uh... Yeah, and my middle daughter as well. I think I may have shared this before in a meeting. She got caught up to heaven in an actual meeting and she was just laid out for over an hour in mm. about 10 minutes. It's about 2,000 people. I mean, she's laid out on the stage and she's not moving. And so she tells us later she saw the Lord, she saw angels, she saw heaven. And then the Lord came down to her. He had two angels beside him. And he said, I'm giving you eagle eyes. Mm. So this isn't the older do- oldest daughter. This is the middle daughter. and she- we said eagle eyes. She doesn't know what that terminology means, mm-hmm. but we know that it means he's he's bringing her into a seer dimension. And then another thing happened that we were in Alabama, in Huntsville, Alabama, the service. I, I called some kids up, pray for them. So my daughter goes out, but her legs, my middle daughter, her legs mm-hmm. are just up in the air. So you know how you do exercises? You do those leg raises where you got to hold your legs up for 20 seconds. Yeah. And that takes a lot of ab ab muscles and back muscles where her legs was up in there for like three minutes while she was out slain in the spirit. Wow. I mean, you couldn't do that on your own. And so we said, well, what was going on? She said, well, I was out, but I saw a box put under my legs. Mm -hmm. And we felt like an angel put a box, which was gifts that would be used later in her life. So we saw her legs up, but she saw in the spirit realm, like an angel come and put a box under her leg. And she didn't feel that she was exerting any muscle strength. She felt there was a box in her legs with her legs up. So these kids, I don't know, but we just bless the Lord because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter eight, that I and the uh, children the Lord have given me are for signs and wonders. And it talks about if we don't bring the children into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the spirit room, the revelation of the heavens, signs and wonders, the things of the Holy Spirit, it talks about then there's wizards and, and witches and stuff that peep and mutter that will try to draw them to the supernatural, but on the dark side. Somebody just mm-hmm. sent me this colorful uh, uh, toy, and it's not mm-hmm. a toy. purple, green, orange. And it's your first Ouija set for kids. 
Oh, no. The devil is a liar. Yeah. It looks like a toy, but it's a demonic vehicle to open up torment, schizophrenia, misery, nightmares, all cock activity and hauntings in your house and with your children. And don't play with that type of stuff. Don't let them play with it because it's only going to open up darkness. Yeah. So we have to be. Yeah. We have to put some force behind mm -hmm. reaching the children. Yes, absolutely. And that's so important today. I mean, we see what's happening in the school systems. You know, it's like I'm just praying for, you know, a lot of these that are caught up in the LGBTQ, um, you know, culture and they're trying to shove it down uh, the kids throats. I'm praying for them to have supernatural heavenly encounters. And I've even talked to some um, young relatives in my family and, and there's an eight year old and a 12 year old in our family that they have been told in school, you can, you may have been born a boy or a girl, but you can change that anytime you want. You can identify anytime you want with something else. You can go back and forth. And it's like, are you kidding me? And they're teaching that at, at you know, one of my uh, uh, great nephews, he's eight years old and he's telling me these things that they're teaching them. It's I mean, yeah, it's wickedness. It's yeah. idolatry and it's Sodom and Gomorrah. And we have to stand our ground. Uh, you know, it's prophesied these times will come, mm -hmm. but the Lord has the final word. And that's yeah. why he has to show up even greater to demolish those type of mindsets and systems. Yes. And so, yeah, I've been praying for, like I said, for these children that are impacted by this to have these heavenly encounters, that the Lord would speak the truth to them and they would know the truth and the truth would set them free. And I have a, another relative. She She's just a powerhouse. And she's like, whenever the teachers or anyone tries to tell her, you know, to she can change her identity. She goes, nope, I'm a girl. I was born a girl. I'm staying a girl. And she stands <laughs> for it. She stands against it. So I'm so proud of her. And so, you know, I'm praying for her to have strength. So it's so important that our kids have heavenly encounters to, to combat things in our day as well. Yes. And, you know, I was ask, I was praying to the Lord and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why am I seeing you doing so much with kids in yeah. a more supernatural way? He said, because the darkness is greater. Mm -hmm. Because when I and I'm not that old, you know, I'm only 30 in the spirit, maybe, but 42, Amen. Uh, close to 43. <laughs> but I believe that the past generations, the you know, no visions, no dreams. The word was enough for 80 percent of us. Mm -hmm. You know, if it made sense, it was enough for most of us. But now with so much competition with social media and with all of these doctrines, the Lord is up in the ante on his end as well, because Isaiah 60, darkness may cover the land and gross darkness the people, but the Lord's light will arise. It will shine in the midst of darkness. So I believe mm -hmm. Lord's doing something greater with the youth to yes. combat. the. And, and you know, this uh, you can self-identify stuff they're talking about. I saw it on the news the other day. I don't know mm -hmm. if it was this country, another country that they gave the option. You could identify even as like an inanimate object. Like it's getting beyond gender. Like it's getting to some weird, creepy, transhuman yes. type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's yeah. it's going to get worse, but it's going to get better at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, people are going to have to make a clear. It's going to be clear. It's one thing if you're duped and deceived. It's another thing where the light is here and the darkness here, and you're just clearly partnering with darkness. I think that's how it's going to come down in the mm -hmm. end days. People are making a conscious decision if they're denying God or if they're mm -hmm. embracing darkness. Yeah. And so to me, with everything we're dealing with in our culture these days, heavenly encounters are so important. They really are. Yes. You know? Yes. And for, I'm praying. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm praying for politicians. They're yeah. some of the people that need them the most, you know, especially if they're mm -hmm. linked into political parties or political groups or coalitions that, mm -hmm. you know, have embraced things that we don't believe in. And we believe that bring, uh, um, abominations into the land that bring demonic uh increase into the land some of them need heavenly encounters where the lord tells them that abo abortion is not okay where they where they yeah. learn you know human trafficking is not okay i frown mm -hmm. upon that uh yes. where they learn that you know lgbtq tq or whatever letters mm -hmm. they added on that it's not okay with heaven you know so we need to pray for politicians and political makers and legislators to have heavenly encounters where they learned the truth from the source himself. 
Oh, that's so good. You just hit something really significant. It's like, we need to pray for those who have wicked, evil agendas, you know, whether leaders or in culture or government, um, wh wherever they're called to, if there's a wicked agenda there, we need to pray for these people to have heavenly encounters with the Lord that they would know the truth. That's why it's so important. And, you know, we can like pray against all the wickedness and all that. And, you know, we're supposed to pray against, you know, the strongholds and all that um, in our day. Yet we need to pray for these people to have heavenly encounters with the Lord. You just hit something really vital there. Yes. Yes. Because I mean, and even though we look at it as, you know, they're doing wickedness, they're doing all this dark stuff. And I, I've studied some of this stuff out. Many of those people, they feel what they're doing is not actually wicked. Mm -hmm. They know that it's not accepted by society as a whole, but they've been indoctrinated in other spiritual systems or ways mm -hmm. of thinking, ways of light, suppose false light yes. that cause good evil and cause evil good. Right. And so they think they're actually doing something for a higher purpose, but it's only bringing destruction of lives and souls to themselves, to others, and to the world. So yeah. there's people that need to be snatched out of those Illuminati type of systems and mindsets oh, and, yes. and groups and cults and, and re-indoctrinated into truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we pray they get those heavenly encounters in Jesus' name. So I wanted to talk about heavenly encounters that happen with people, you know, uh, when they lose a loved one. And, you know, I've had quite a few myself. When my mom went to heaven, I had a handful of encounters where I saw her in heaven, how happy she was, how young and beautiful she was. And it's like, I know the Lord can give us heavenly encounters to comfort us after, you know, losing a loved one. And, you know, in this COVID time, I know people have lost loved ones and, you know, they've gone through difficult times and, you know, the Lord wants to comfort them when, when, when they lose a loved one. What would you think about that? It's like God gives you heavenly encounters to let your, you know, loved ones know that past and graduated to heaven that, um, you know, they're okay. And, you know, he brings them to us as comfort. Yes, I think it happens. Those are some of the most beautiful and heartfelt encounters. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had any um, of our loved ones, but mm -hmm. there w was a dear sister, a very precious sister, that unfortunately her son passed away in a car accident. I believe he fell asleep at the wheel mm -hmm. and um, he had been driving for work and uh, he had, you know, two young boys and a wife. And so anyway, the mother was under some torment because people we're saying, you know, did he make heaven? Did he make hell? I don't even know why that was a topic of discussion, but mm -hmm. it brought some type of torment to her. And a few weeks later, I'm just sitting actually in this room that I'm in now and the heavens mm -hmm. open. I just see the Lord beside the face of her son. But specifically, I see him from like the neck up. And so I said, I saw your son that, you know, passed and I, you know, he, he was with the Lord. You know, I didn't see the Lord's mm -hmm. face. It was like Lord's all line. And I said, but the thing is, he had on a red collar and a red shirt. Un, like he had on a double, like two red shirts. So like a red shirt, but then a red shirt under it with a red collar. And mm -hmm. I said, I don't know why that's important, but that's what I saw. And she just said red was his favorite color. He loved red shirts. So mm -hmm. that was a sign for her that he made it in. Oh, and it was a sense of comfort for her. So the Lord will give those instances mm -hmm. because, you know, one thing that he doesn't want to happen is a spirit of grief to come into people's life and attach itself because there is a grieving process that's yeah. human. Mm -hmm. It said that even Jesus wept when Lazarus died. Yes. But there's a time and season to grief. Um, and, you know, I just heard uh, Pastor Chuck talk about this, that if that grief stays in your life too long now it opens up itself for a spirit of grief to come in mm -hmm. and then other demonic torments and so lord gives those heavenly encounters and mm -hmm. it gives such peace and comfort that not only are the relatives okay yeah but one day you're going to be okay too yeah that's so good and as you were sharing about your friend's encounter of losing her son it just reminded me of an encounter i had um i was uh with friends and we were worshiping at their house and all of a sudden i'm I'm caught up and I see their son who had passed away, I think a year or so, you know, before that. And he was listening to us 
over like an intercom speaker in heaven. Um, and he, his dad is a worship leader. So his dad, uh, he would hear his dad on earth through an intercom in heaven worshiping so he could hear his dad worshiping and be a part of it and then it, it looked like a, a woodworking room and he was carving a guitar and it was an interesting guitar the bottom was like carved out like like circular it was a very interesting unique guitar that i've never seen on earth mm. and so he was carving this and listening to his dad um worshiping on earth and then um while this was happening, I didn't know this, but my friend, who's that was his son who passed, he was praying and saying, Lord, did he make it to heaven? Is he even in heaven? Because he wasn't wow. following the Lord, you know, at the time. Um, he grew up in the church, but, you know, he he fell away later. And he's like, is he even in heaven? Is is he, did he make it, Lord? And he was kind of tortured by that, not knowing if his son made it to heaven. And so all of a sudden, I just like, burst out in tears. And I told my friend, I'm seeing this right now. And I told him that encounter and wow. it brought him such peace to know that his son is in heaven. And that guitar he was making was for his dad when he would get there someday. Oh, wow. Cause his dad was a worship leader. And yes. And a guitarist. So, That's a powerful seer encounter too, in a heavenly encounter. I mean, and, it, mm -hmm, go ahead. No, that not only gave him comfort, it probably gave him a sense of excitement. Mm -hmm. They're going to be yeah. reunited together and worship together and just mm -hmm. be able to do things together again in eternity. Yeah. And so yeah. those encounters to me are the Lord wants to comfort us that are still here left on earth, that our loved ones in heaven are waiting for us. And we get to, you know, sometimes we get sneak peeks of what they're doing. And, you know, there are special days, uh, you know, whether it's my mom's birthday or, you know, we sure miss her during the holidays as Lord, like, Lord can I see what mom's doing in heaven? Can you give me a glimpse? And he always gives me one. And she's, oh, wow. she's having so much fun. She's, she's so beautiful and young. She's touring heaven <laughs> and she's praying for her kids. And she just says, I want you to enjoy life. I always hear her say, I want you all to enjoy life. She doesn't want us to mourn over her. She's wow. living the best, you know, eternal life, obviously th that we could ever have. And, uh, she's, she just wants her children to be happy. And I love having those encounters and glimpses of what mom's doing in heaven because it brings such comfort to us. So. Yeah. And you, you've you shared a little mm -hmm. bit of that before. And yeah. I remember more than one person, I think I texted you, messaged my wife and myself, how they started crying and it, it ministered to them so deeply. Mm -hmm. So we just, I just, if it's okay, can we pray for people that need comfort yes. from grief? Yes, absolutely. Yes. yes. I think mm -hmm. it's, I just felt an anointing on that. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll open up and I think you should close it because you have a such a strong you've had that you have a grace for it. So, Father, mm -hmm. we thank you for those that have dealt yeah. with any type of grief mm -hmm. or losing loved ones, God. And they're the enemy's trying to torment them. The enemy's trying to steal their peace. We pray, Lord, that you would give them a supernatural heavenly encounter, that you would give them a supernatural confirmation, Lord, that will give them the peace of God that surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. and that would also give them joy to know Lord that you're in control and that you have prepared an abode for those that serve you faithfully in Jesus mighty name. Yeah. And even now I'm seeing, it looks like a, uh, a wide view. It's like an open rectangular view. God is going to give you a, a new view of heaven that you're going to be able to not only have heavenly encounters, but you're going to view loved ones. You know, you're, you're going to get a heavenly view of, of what they're up to and, and get glimpses of the Lord to bring you peace, to bring you comfort, that they're okay, that they want you to enjoy life. They want you to live your best life here on earth and they're waiting for you. You know, that, uh, but they know that you have, you know, you're still here. You have a destiny and a calling that you need, need to live out. But more than anything, they want you to know that they are celebrating yes. their, um, you know, they want you to enjoy life here on earth, earth. And even some feel, I, I feel like a guilt and a shame and a grief on people like, you know, they're blaming themselves for, you know, loved ones deaths. We just break that off in Jesus name. Those have felt guilty or lived with shame. Like I felt guilty. I wasn't there for my loved one or I was, you know, too busy to see them. And then they pass the next day. 
you know, that type of guilt. I didn't get to say goodbye. The Lord wants you to know that they're so happy for you and, you know, let go of that guilt and shame. And, um, you know, they don't want you to live with that at all. They want yes. you to live freely, enjoying life, your best life here on earth and until you're reunited and get to meet them. So yes. we just thank you for that, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So there's one more thing I wanted to do. Um, okay. I was going to ask you to pray for people, but um, I want people to know how they get postured for an encounter. So, some people that encounters may be brand new to them. How do we posture ourselves for an encounter with the Lord and open ourselves to have one? And then I would love for you to go out praying and doing like an inactivation for us. So one, increase your word intake. Mm -hmm. Just like if you're trying to get in the, well, I've never been in a bodybuilding competition, but you know, you increase your water intake mm -hmm. and it helps you to get it cut up, but increase your word intake. And then during your time of prayer, a lot of people pray and they get up and just run away. Mm -hmm. After your time of prayer, spend some extra little time in worship and get quiet before the Lord and allow him to just minister to areas of your heart in that quiet and still place. I believe mm -hmm. those two keys are going to be a big part. And then thirdly, before you go to bed, remind the Lord that you're expecting him to meet you in a special way. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen the first night, fine. The second night, 10th night. But keep it before the Lord and keep mm -hmm. it before. Keep your faith on the line for it. So, Father, right now in Jesus yeah. name, we thank you that mm -hmm. the spirit of encouragement would go forth. That, Lord, you want to reveal yourself to your sons, your daughters. You want to reveal yourself to the unbelievers so they can become your sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, you want to reveal heavenly truths that can be taken back into the earth to build up people, to empower people, to equip people, to break off the spirit of grief and to let them know, Lord, that you're not only Lord, but you're on the heavenly throne and you're over the affairs of man and you're over the affairs of our life and that you see everything that pertains to us. And that you care for us. So we thank you, Lord, that you would open up those mm -hmm. encounters, whether through dreams, whether through visions, whether through translations, however you want to send them, Lord, do it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Yeah, I see it happening now. Yep, God is doing it. He's stirring stirring it up. And, and there's like a hunger and a passion. And uh, I just see a lot of people just becoming lighter, lighter in the yes. spirit that uh, he's just going to take you up and, and be caught up. So get ready for those. And uh, he's got so many things. It's like, come up here. I have great, you know, and mighty things to show you that you do not know of. Know of. It's a come up here moment for you. You're just going to get caught up and the Lord's going to show you things to, you know, to help your family, to help you in the workplace, to yes. minister to people. Um, he's stirring up new callings and, and even giving fresh mantles to people. And so you're going to uh, have fresh encounters for that, for new mantles and new callings and new assignments in the Lord. He's just going to cut catch you up and anoint you and show you, you know, mighty things you don't know of. And uh, some of you have been praying and seeking and asking for more, Lord, more and more heavenly encounters, more of you. And it's just going to happen. It's like one minute you're here, the next minute you're just going to be caught up and uh, you're going to have incredible things to share with people. Um, yeah. And we just thank you. We praise you for that, Lord, that you're anointing and equipping your saints for more, for the greater works, for the greater works. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh. I'm expecting some wonderful testimonies and feedback from this show. Yes, yes. Yeah. Make sure and tell us. For the, for the viewers, yeah. Yeah, and so I want to go out sharing some of your incredible resources that went along with your program today. You've got some, uh, let, first of all, let's tell us where people can get a hold of you, your websites and all that. Uh, D4TN.org. Uh, mm -hmm. Our admin team email address is uh, D4TNGlobal at gmail.com, D4TNGlobal at gmail.com. And, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll put that in the description. Go ahead. Okay. Facebook and Instagram at DeMonte TV. There it is. Yep, that's awesome. Facebook as well. Yay. Perfect. And then let's talk about your books. You've got Discerning of Spirits. Yes. So that's when the Lord actually visited me and rebuked me for teaching on this topic wrong. And I teach on the seven 
uh, dimensions of the gift of discerning of spirits that's found in 1 Corinthians 12. So we talked about discerning into the realm of the angelic, demonic, uh, mm -hmm. the movement of the Holy Spirit, and many other things. And this gives a pretty comprehensive yet practical uh, mm -hmm. breakdown of this gift. Mm -hmm. And then you have supernatural dimensions of dreams. And I mean, so tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so this is the okay, this is the dreams one. Um, understanding how God works while you sleep. We're going to talk in this book about prophetic dreams. We're going to talk about how to remember your dreams, how to activate your dream life into a, a, a just more consistency and fluent, fluent, and also how not to miss the wisdom of God in dreams and mm -hmm. how God imparts gifts and graces through dreams. Uh, so this one's been doing very well and really good feedback from it. And many people that are not dreamers or they dream very mm -hmm. little, they've read this book in one setting or read a few chapters. All of a sudden they're getting two, three, four dreams in one night. So I've gotten mm -hmm. that testimony a lot of times that really blessed me. Uh, mm -hmm. So the supernatural dimension of dreams. Right. And then we also have the supernatural gift of faith. Tell us about that. This is the one where I talked about the Lord took me up to heaven for over an hour and talked to me about the coming move of God. Mm -hmm. I talk about how to lock, unlock a new realm of power. This really deals with the miraculous. This deals with taking your faith into a supernatural realm. Uh, if you see our ministry as a lot of supernatural manifestations, demonstrations, and the gift of faith is very instrumental for that. And this will help you to uh, tap into a miraculous dimension of faith. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you have the gift of faith. And we've talked about that, uh, I think, when you were in our studio and you released yes. the faith to people. So yeah, that's, that's powerful. I highly recommend all of DeMonte's resources. He's just a wealth of wisdom and revelation that the Lord has anointed and equipped him to pour out to you viewers. And Amen. so I just know that many more encounters are going to happen. Like you said, we want to hear about them. And just a reminder, we want to tell our viewers where you can find us and watch us. You can follow us on Rumble at uh rumble.com elijah force and uh yes we're, we're new there so please go like follow us and give us some love on there and of course we're on facebook we're at facebook.com elijah for show and uh, again you can like and follow us on there and then you know we have our email which is connect at ElijahForce.com. Share with us your testimonies and breakthrough and, and uh, we'll give DeMonte feedback as well. I'm sure he would be so blessed of yes. what happened in today's show. So awesome. Well, DeMonte, awesome. thank you for coming on as always. I know you're going to be a regular. I hope you'll come back many more times and, you know, teach Absolutely. us and equip us. And I know our new, our viewers were so impacted already by your interview that we had thank you, you on. Yeah, thanks thank for you. having me. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it and blessings to all the viewers. Yes. Yes. Thank you, viewers, for joining us today on Elijah Force. And never forget, you are a force to be reckoned with. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.